Canelo versus Rocky is going down. What's up, people? Everybody, I'm going to break it down just a little bit. I want to show you guys a little what goes through the mind of a coach during a fight. This is going to be it front and center. I got to make sure I don't turn up too loud because I don't want Facebook cops coming out trying to take my, sh shut me down for a day. Canelo's moving on the kid. He's so highly skilled. Beautiful. Oh, I like the trunks Canelo's rocking tonight. He's rocking some 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 little red look. Got some gold trim. He looked like money, new money. You guys get a chance to see the fight. If you did, holler at your boy. If not, I'm about to break it down. Canelo's looking really, really. Woo! Wow! He's going in with the body shots. Boy, does Rocky look really thin. Whoa. I don't know if he he intended to feel. Man. Ooh, Rocky th coming back. He started leading with a left uppercut right hand, left hook. Doubling the jab, adding a third one. Canelo keeping his hand off the line, going to the body. Whoo. Remember this, man. Nothing supersedes going to the body. And he's leading with that left hook to the body. And right hook. Remember, it's levels to this game. Don't just walk up in there thinking you can just do it. And um, the way you think you look shadow boxing in the house and, and in your imaginary state of mind that you can do this at this level. It takes learning, even when you're in the gym, all of those hours a day six to eight hours a day of just training. Ooh, body shot, liver shot, out of here. It's levels. I'm, this dude is destroying everybody in front of him. Rocky, I'm talking about, goes in here and gets dropped in the first round with a liver shot. It's levels. Wow. He did not see that coming. He probably felt like, because he's beating up guys, having success in the gym, and fighting against guys that don't have or have not been tested or not designed. It takes a different level of dexterity to the body to fight at this level. Canelo learned against Mayweather that there were just levels, not just skills, because everybody learns skills. But how does this transfer into the ring, into a fight, when a guy has different length, different size, the dexterity is different. A champion, the dexterity of his body is different. Ooh! He throwing the five off of the jab, which is a jab straight right there and coming under. That's Canelo. And his hit, he, he, one, five, three, one, five, seven. He throwing a jab, uppercut, hook to the body. He's different, man. He has the best uh, collaboration of combination punches that anybody that I've ever seen besides, you know, guys like Chavez. I love Sugar Ray Robinson's too. Sugar Ray Leonard had very, very fluid ones. Um, Eric Morales, crazy. Nobody had trickier punches. Um, and, I, and I always equate Canelo's success with the punch combinations to watching El Terrible. And if you don't know about El Terrible, his name was Eric. Just like mine. <laughs> but he used to take them things. He he have it thinking he going here and boom. Or he'll feign it up top and just rake you to the body. Bam, bam, boom. Him and Barrera had three of the most epic fights in boxing history. Bar none. Don't forget it because you guys are new generation, new school. This is the boxing bible. How do you fight in the paint? These boys was different. They were a different breed. All right, let's see what um, Rocky got. Sugar Ray Leonard before the fight said Rocky's going to need to have some Rocky in him. I can already see that. Canelo's back is like this wide. He's, have, he's, not, he's not having to cut so much weight. At 168, he's hardly cutting 15 pounds. He's probably walking around around 180, 182. He's, he's in his grown man body now. He's in his $365 million contract eating good body. Ooh, he's just hitting this guy different. I 
And I don't think Canelo's trying to out-volume somebody. He's just throwing more hurting punches. Same way he did with Triple G. Triple G was the most worse for wear during that fight. And uh, anybody who disagrees, just look at his face and imagine what his organs felt like. And I know the style of punching that Canelo was hitting with. He was hitting with totem pole punches. And that means the manner in which your arm and elbow are anchored from the shoulder when you throw the shot. And to do that all night to that dude was just crazy that somebody can do that. But you know what? The Mexican fighter, he's, he's, he's truly a Mexican fighter. But he's gotten it mixed up with a little sugar and spice. He got that liver shot again. He bent him to the hip. He throwing that hook off the jab, hooking him to the body. And he just made his mind up. He going in there, ooh. And if he does this even against Daniel Jacobs, he going to give Jacobs a lot of problems. That is if D Daniel Jacobs signed that contract. What's going on, fam? Good to see you in the building. Ooh. Who you that? Who's that? Mike. Mike Ortiz, my man. Boom. I love it. I call Canelo the Mexican machine gun. Repeat that. I think he likes this, man. Because, see, Canelo knows you fault guys and you fault skill guys. Because nobody gets to this level without fighting somebody. But the difference in dexterity, you know, champions dexterity, who's been in 24 real ones with Triple G, been in there with the greatest of all time in this era, which is Mayweather, been in there against Shane Mosley, bump heads with all of these different fights, Angulo, Austin Trout, Kodo, man, he, he, he touch, him, touch him right here with this one and hiding it and then he did it again. I got to see that again. Wow. What a violent combination of punches. Man, he's sticking what you call body shots to the bread basket. The bread basket means you taking them only to certain areas near the fret, the, the, the liver shot, under the feather rib. Bam! Oh, gosh. And when he looks up at him, when Rocky looks up at him, he's looking up at him like, man, wow, wow. Like, I never, I never bargained for this. He laughing. He's like, damn, this is another level. And it's another level. They don't realize it. And, it's, and, and, and at this point, you're just in deep water. What do you do at this point in time? You admit that you're in deep water and you got to go to game plan B. And game plan B needs to be circle. Use my conditioning. I, I, I really position myself to be conditioned at night. So you got to get out there. You got to do get on Ali. You got to just step back. Pop. This is what you have to do whenever you're in a position like this and the guy has shown you the inside. Pop, pop, pop. He's showing you these. He's touching you here and taking it there. Uh, you have no chance to survive that fight because all he's going to do is go here and then there and then over to the other side and then up to the middle. Pop. And that's Canelo's combination. When you got a guy like that, when you got that kind of height on him, that kind of length on him, you got to pop him, pop him, pop him, pop him, circle him, pop him, pop him, pop him, then go counterclockwise. Pop him, pop him, pop him. You got to keep this right here, pop him, pop. And then once you get in there, pop, pop, when he get close. And I mean, you got to be on that tip. You can't let it get any further in than that. I mean, you have to control it. And uh, most fighters, they don't have the cachet to do it. They don't have the, 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 the strategy. They don't have game plan B. Let me get my remote open. Yeah, they don't have um, they don't have the game plan. Or you have to know how to really create that understanding of how. Just don't just tell me to do it, but how. So what I would do, I say, all right, get on your toes. And when you see them at base, use the stiff arm, all right? So when the stiff arm is being out there. Once he makes a move, you pop him with that jab, pop him with the stiff, pop him, and pop him, and just take his head back, and keep doing that, but circle at the same time, pop, pop, keep your right hand, pop, soon as he tries to close the gap, stick him, and slide. Who would have been able to do that when they heard it and executed it? My biggest thing, that's how you got to do it, you got to know how to tell the fighter to do it, can't just say go do it, just box and move, you can't just say that, oh, Canelo.
Woo, he raked them to pop, pop up top, then here, and then on the right hand side, kidney, liver. He's breaking them down to the organs. There's no way he can survive 12 rounds of this. But you know what? Because he ain't keeping Canelo off with a jab. Like I said earlier on the last Tevin Farmer live stream on the last fight, I said he has to position himself to step on his punch, own that real estate. As soon as he comes, he got to pop, pop. He got to turn it like Hearns used to. He got to punch him with that right hand. Pop, pop, but don't fall in because if you fall in, you're going to get countered. You got to stand your ground, move another one. Pop, pop. On another state of real estate, pop, pop. On another section, pop, pop. On another part of town, and just keep owning parts of town until you control the ring with your jab. You know, all Canelo's doing now, he's leaning on him, he's resting, and now he's going to just preserve energy to throw the shots harder, and then he walks right up to him, and bam, he's knocked out. That's it, man. So this is the boxing game, and if you're listening to a real individual who understands it, trust me. What's your question? Um, you're a flyweight. Let me see. I gotta stretch this thing out. Wow, I missed another knockdown. Let me see. Let me put my glasses on because I can't see this thing really good. Let me see. You're a flyweight. I have a muscle mass of as a middleweight. Do you think the lower weight class have knockout power like the fighter? Oh yeah, weight class do. Yeah, or the power of a gun. Well, so does a lot of people, and I'm not knocking your power, but you gotta understand, man. That's why people get into fighting because they they got something special. They got something different. Um, don't put a lot of weight in that because as good as good a power as you have, as you go up the levels, the better the defense gets, the better the counter punching gets. If you come into a gym like mine, what you're going to find is that you can throw power, wheel, take your power away. Like Ali used to do guys, like Sweet Pea used to do guys. The same way Mayweather used to do guys like Madonna and Canelo. We're going to take your power away. So don't make that as a, don't make that a, a, an opportunity to jump up in a weight class because you got power. Mikey Garcia has power, but Mikey Garcia is going to learn soon that it doesn't just mean, just because you can hit does not mean go up in weight class because punches, you know, my son, he's six. He hit me with a punch. Yes, the other day. And it hurt for a six-year-old. That doesn't mean start fighting grown men. When you hit a guy whose body is not dense, those punches are going to affect him. But when you hit a guy who has trained against Olympian, national champions, guys who've gotten and received and maintained Golden Glove status, Meaning they didn't just win it in their state. They won the national golden gloves. And then they were able to go back and repeat that. I worked with a fighter who repeated it seven times. You tell me that a guy like that, if you hit him, you think that's going to be a, affect him? No, because the difference in what he's used to do. Your body is only conditioned to do what you put it through. And if every week, every month, every year, you're fighting against athletes that are on an elite level, you will not separate yourself just because you can hit. And you got good power. Good power is just an attribute. And at this level, you got to have more than an attribute. You got to have more than skills. You got to have a whole entire team where everybody has a responsibility. You are like Apple the company Apple if you just have a great phone and a great computer and you have no employees then your company's going to bust because Samsung can out market you at that point in time because you don't have a marketing team or promotional team 
or team to go out in the field and make Apple appear to be the brand that they are. I hope this makes sense. What you do is stay where you are. Don't eat yourself out of your weight class and collect all the jewels. Don't be like Adrian Broner. At 130, he was dominating. He would have went down in the history books, but he ate a little bit more than he needed to and took off a little less. And he was 135, then 147. Now look at him. He's in, kind of in a lost world. And um, that comes from overeating, eating yourself out of your weight class because you think you can hang with the big boys because somebody that you know is similar to you stature-wise or they got good pop or you may hit harder. But man, it's just levels to this game and then it's a mistake to jump up and wait. When you can be where you are in a crew, don't, don't, don't overlook how hard it really is. When somebody can take them hands of yours and put them in your pocket. George Foreman was knocking guys out and making their feet go numb. And then he met the greatest of all time in the ring. Google that. Tell me how that worked out for him. I'm just saying. Canelo wins the fight. And that's why we got coaches on the prospect of developing into... There's much more to know than how to throw the jab, how to move your feet, how to block, how to counter. It's much more to the game than this. Those components are one thing. There are many other layers. Canelo is an absolute different kind of animal. That's why he tests himself and he has to challenge himself with different situations and scenarios because you want to continue to get better. And the only way to do that is to put yourself in the fire. But you got to be prepared for what's to come. And never think, oh, I got this. Be smart. Be wise. Never overlook and never underestimate the game of boxing. There's a lot more out there because you ain't seen nothing yet. Unless you, unless your name is um, Juan Manuel Marquez and you disguised as somebody else on this feed, you ain't seen nothing yet. So, all good. What's up, family? I'm just telling the truth, man. That's what I'm here to do. Master Box and check the page. The, rec the repertoire speaks for itself. But my thing is to make sure that the coaches and the guys out there really have the, the, the path and don't get caught out here thinking that you got it figured out. Because if you're a coach and you just got a lot of talent and you think you know something, you don't know nothing until you get to those levels. I know because I don't put 25 years into it. It's not easy, and there's many levels to it. So um, the only way you will know is once you get experience with it. So with that being said, man, coaches, follow us in the uh, Master Boxing Academy. Go join. She said joint is, is, is just kind of gives you this kind of stuff every single day, though. But inside the gym, in the drills, the training, the regiments, um, you got to invest in where you're going to go, and you got to have a hell of a mentor like I said, doctors do not just go to a med school for no reason. The reason why they do is to separate themselves from guys like your uncle who never even finished high school saying that I can repair your leg. They went to separate themselves from that. That's what I did. I separated myself from regular coaching, became a professor, a teacher of sorts, so that guys will be able to follow a guy who got educated. You going to trust a guy who's gotten a Ph.D., to guide you to fix your knee or your shoulder or your heart or someone that you love. Trust me. And that's the difference, man. So to learn more, just follow us over at Master Boxing Academy online. Join, follow us. We got you covered. But until next time, I'm out, man. Be blessed at God's speed. Continue to follow the post. Share it and tag one of the coaches you might know that really, really are, they could be much greater if they had a guideline. That's what we do. We preserve the guideline. I'm going to read this last question. Um, all right. You was too small at 115. Why were you too small? I've been guys at 130, 145. I don't want to go up and wait. No, you don't need to go up and wait. Okay, well, you've been in the game for 20 years, and you don't need to go up and wait no more. So that's that's kind of it, man. Until the next time, man, be blessed at God. Speed, you guys. Master Boxing Academy, Coach Eric Bradley signing out, a.k.a. The Real Fight Doctor. And you know there is no other on this level.
followers. Be blessed. Peace.